Welcome to this episode of Monday Morning Joe. I'm Dr. Andrew Kirkendall from Moffitt Cancer Center. Monday Morning Joe is a quick-hitting, coffee-talk-style, five-episode series on the latest and greatest in advanced systemic mastocytosis with associated myeloid neoplasms. Please remember to subscribe to the Exchange CME YouTube channel and make sure notifications are turned on to be prompted when new episodes are released. Today we're going to discuss the pathogenesis of systemic mastocytosis with a focus on the KIT driver mutation. So over 90% of adult systemic mastocytosis cases are caused by a somatic gain-of-function mutation in the KIT gene. Mast cell production is under the regulation of the gene kit that encodes the CD117 transmembrane tyrosine kinase. The classic characteristic mutation is a mutation involving exon 17 uh, at the 816 locus. Essentially this is called the D816V mutation of the kit gene. And overall this leads to constitutive activation, prolonged survival, and independent proliferation of mast cells which then can accumulate in organs and cause dysfunction. This does not fully explain the heterogeneous symptoms that are observed in patients with various systemic mastocytosis subtypes. However, it does often indicate the presence of this disease. So let's watch a short animation to help visualize the role of the proto-oncogene kit in systemic mastocytosis pathogenesis. Mast cells respond rapidly to foreign organisms, antigens, and toxins through the release of various mediators, such as histamine and tryptase, which occurs within minutes, as well as cytokines and chemokines that recruit other inflammatory cells, which occurs over several hours. Stem cell factor, SCF, is critical for mast cell growth, differentiation, and survival. The transmembrane receptor for SCF is KIT, encoded by the proto-oncogene kit. Over 95% of adult SM cases are caused by somatic mutations in the kit gene, with the most common mutation being a substitution of aspartic acid for valine in the second catalytic domain of the kit transmembrane tyrosine kinase receptor, known as D816V. This leads to constitutive kinase activity, which results in increased activation, prolonged survival, and independent proliferation of mast cells, leading to abnormal activity or infiltration of mast cells that interfere with normal function. Now, in addition to the KIT D816V uh, uh, mutation, uh, oftentimes additional mutations can be present and they have prognostic relevance. Some common mutations that coexist with the KIT mutation would be mutations in genes such as SRSF2, ASXL1, TET2, and RUNX1. What do we think about when we think about the clinical significance of a KIT mutation? Well, first off, we know that there's prognostic implications. In patients that have an associated hematologic neoplasms and you see the presence of a KIT mutation, this may spur or prompt a further workup for the presence of systemic mastocytosis if this was not previously diagnosed. Uh, it may also trigger the thought that maybe a, uh, a targeted medication uh, that would be focused on uh, inhibiting this KIT mutation may be a reasonable alternative if we're, if we're able to document the presence of systemic mastocytosis. Some options would be something as a non-selective inhibitor of KIT, such as mitostorin, or a more selective inhibitor, such as abapritinib. So what are some take-home points as far as mutations in, in systemic mastocytosis with an associated hematologic neoplasm? Well, first I would say that nearly all patients with systemic mastocytosis have a mutation in KIT, specifically this KIT D816V mutation. The other thing I would mention is that you really need high sensitivity testing to be able to identify this mutation. This is a problem that often accompanies uh, older tests with less sensitivity. Tests that were more, more often used in the past for diseases such as acute myeloid leukemia had a sensitivity of 10% or 5%, which could only suggest a positive kit mutation test if 5% or more of the cells had the presence of the mutation. Oftentimes when we're dealing with systemic mastocytosis, we find that the kit mutation is present in 1% or even less of cells, making it very difficult to diagnose using these older tests. So you do need a highly sensitive assay in order to adequately test for kit mutations. And the last thing I would mention is that additional mutations, things that are common myeloid mutations such as TET2, SRSF2, ASXL1, RUNX1 commonly occur in systemic mastocytosis and have prognostic value. Thank you for joining me today. As discussed earlier, please check back for new episodes on the Exchange CME YouTube page. Clinicians, nurses, and pharmacists can also visit exchangecme.com for free access to CME in a variety of therapeutic areas. Thanks again. We'll see you on the next episode of Monday Morning Joe.